You hear are that? You to, are you able to do that for the whole hour? Uh. <laughs> The, the look of intensity on your face while you're doing it, it's yeah. impressive. Yeah, you're well, you're, you don't want to hit yourself low, you know, you don't want to low blow yourself. True, that's and a very valid point. It's tight quarters here behind my desk, so so would that make you a tight quarters horse? Uh, no, I, I guess I just, am I supposed to talk like this the whole time? Swear to me. I'm a horse. Well, in case you didn't figure this one out, boys and girls, this is the Halloween edition of mm. the Undisputed Demipod. Mm -hmm. By the way, we, we, have, we, have a, we have a video version of this show now on our YouTube channel. Right. Video component. How about that? Hence the Halloween costume. Yeah, Halloween costumes and just audio makes no sense. No. I mean, no. I wouldn't put it past us, but... I, no, I don't put anything past us. We got Batman. We got a uh, reindeer. A, that's a, a reindeer. Reindeer? You're a reindeer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With a red Hold nose. You're, you're Rudolph. It's got a red nose. You're Rudolph because you it's red. You're, yeah. You a nose on your hood. He can't see that because it's on top of his head. Right. I can't guarantee I'll be in this costume for the full game of the show. I am a little hot. Well, that would mean that when the costume comes off, that means Halloween's over. That's true. That's true. That's hmm. true. Yeah, I don't know well, if I'm going to make it the whole time with my Batman suit on. Guys. You're going to make me wear it the whole time, aren't you? If the costumes come off, it's no longer the Halloween edition. Oh boy! All right, we'll we'll, we'll uh, <laughs> we're true prof talking. we're true professionals. We'll get through this. Let's get I, to talking then. Let's. Okay, let's start off with the news. Okay. The news. Oh, the news. We're gonna talk about the news. Every episode, you now have to sing the jingle, no matter who's on the podcast, the no matter jingle. anything. It doesn't matter if Hulk Hogan's on jingle. That, that's our new news jingle, yeah. Frank singing. <laughs> yeah, I just made it up. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You're Low budget. Product. You're High budget. production quality. You're a clutch reindeer. In the clutch. So, the last week or so, you did some independent wrestling. I did. You worked an indie show for MCW. What was that about? And what was uh, it like? MCW. My assumption is... Maryland Championship Wrestling, but I could be wrong because it was in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, it was fun. It was good. They had a a, I, a lot of um, Ring of Honor people from past. That are was Buff, was Buff Bagwell there? Buff Bagwell was there doing a um, Mr. Rogers yes. sort of character. I was a bit confused, but at the same time, not mad at it at all. <laughs> Big ups to the Buff Buff Bagwell. He is yeah. um, to the Buff Daddy. The Buff Daddy is rehabbing himself and getting himself in a better spot. So kudos to him. Re and I. Like a an injury or rehabbing, you know what we're talking about. The rehab, rehab. Uh, ooh, yeah. source effect. Well, then, well wishes to Buff because he is the stuff, or he was the stuff. He was the stuff that night. I mean, you know, he did uh, quite a Mister Rogers sort of um, thing. Yeah, and uh, I wrestled a gentleman by the name of Miami Mike. Miami Mike uh, was not real familiar with him prior to that. Um, but I will say, I, I think for like five years in, and um, his ability belied his years in, if I'm saying that correctly. Like, 
he was quite capable. Um, as things would work out, we did not have. Really? Wow. You're Apparently kidding me. He didn't. Whoop. And he's. You're muted. Yeah, the you're horse. still muted. Yeah, the horse lost his voice. We lost the horse. Let's see if I can unmute that. Huh. Cannot unmute your guest. There, okay. there we go. He's back. Back in black. All right, from Hewlett Park, New York. Local boy. They were, well, yeah, they were nine out of ten times they try to send uh, sell me Richard Pills, if you know what I mean. Hey oh, hey oh, Batman! You look confused. They're trying to sell you Richard Pills, like actual like pills, or they want you to be Richard Pills in your name. No, they're trying to sell me pills. It's like one of those. It's like the Canadian pharmacy. Oh, do they think that you have a problem from Hewlett Park, New York, <laughs> via? <laughs> Guy generally has an accent. Go oh, figure. It's interesting. But yeah, they're always trying to sell me the Richard Pills. Hmm. Anyway, anyway, back to Miami Mike. Miami Mike, uh, good worker. As the scenario would unfold, we did not have any, um, we had very little conversation. Um, and boom, we're in the ring. And, uh, interestingly enough, the, we, uh, we called, we, 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 we just, we did it all, um, on the fly and it was really fun. It has been a long time. Um, and I don't know that it gets done enough. In today's wrestling, but man, was it fun! And he uh, he was there for everything, and he was up for everything. And we uh, did top rope at Falcon Arrow to finish. Oh, it was, yeah, it was fun. And you know, normally like an indie show, I, I don't know, I I don't know. I'm feeling this this run. I really am. Like I'm going, to, I I threw a top rope falcon in my indie last indie before this. Like, I think I don't know. I don't know what's gotten into me. Maybe it's the bats, but I'm like, hey, let's just let it fly. Fuck it. Maybe it's the Richard Pills. It could maybe, be Richard Pills. Maybe I could be all hopped up on Richard Pills. What's I a did, thumb? Go ahead. Uh, I did see something asking. Um, on one of the social medias, why you haven't made the top rope Falcons arrow your finisher? Um, I it is. I finished that match with it, and uh, it's been something that over the years I've done. Um, but yeah, I I think it's uh, I think it deserves that um, placement at this point. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's multiple reasons as to why a move like that doesn't end up being, but I, I think from a making sense standpoint, um, it certainly should be. So that's nice. the direction I'm going with it. Yeah. What's the thought process when you go into indie matches? Cause you, obviously you see a different guy and every indie show. Depends on what their ability is. And you try to assess that you know, um, from asking questions before the match, if you're not familiar with them, which at this point I'm not familiar with most indie talent, um, you know, and no knock on them. I just, you know, I, when I'm not wrestling, I pay attention to no wrestling. Like I'm, it's my wife, it's my, my daughters, my stepdaughter, like, you know, that's, that's what I focus on. So, Indie wrestling, I really don't have um, a good grasp. Uh, so you try to get that. And then usually within the first, like, five minutes or so, you, you get an idea as to what level we're working with. 
and that can, you know, go from one end to the other. So you really kind of base it on that. And, you know, you when you've been doing it long enough, you can add, delete on a whim, you know, and, and you can just, I don't know, you just get it done and make it work. So it's actually kind of cool going back to the Indies. I uh, didn't think I'd be enjoying it the way I am. Well, you also had a stint with uh, Impact Wrestling. We touched we touched upon that a couple weeks ago, but we didn't talk too much of we talked at all about the Josh Alexander match as it didn't air as of yet. What was that like? Mm-hmm. Josh Alexander. Ah, I was and I was expecting it to be good, um, but it was you know it it even exceeded the expectations because. Uh, yeah, he's just – he's good at what he does. Um, <laughs> I like to think I'm good at what I do. Um, and that's just – that's when wrestling can, can really be something cool. And I, and I feel like we were able to put uh, something cool together. Um, a little more conversation, a l- little more, you know – uh, time that we had, but nothing needed to be overdone or, or overproduced. Like I'm, I, we're just two guys that have been doing this long enough that that we can go out and kind of um, let it fly. And and I thought that we did a good amount of that, and that there was so much organic sort of uh, stuff that transpired in that match um, that I think that's what made it. Uh, good. That was the best part about it. And uh, yeah, Josh is good, man. He is real good. Good. That is good. That is good. Do you see a rematch for Mr. Alexander? Uh, I don't know. Um, my status with, um, you know, um, a lot of people were kind of making the assumption that I signed with Impact. Um, I have not signed with anyone other than um, Global Titans, which is not pro wrestling. So I do have that boxing match in November. Um, and then I, it's, uh, I have a second fight that will be determined. So that's really the only longstanding contract that I have. Everything else, I am figuring it out. So Impact happens to be another one of those places and uh you don't know where i'm up that's true i mean there are rumors of you being in the royal rumble this year but we can't we can't confirm that yeah i could right. turn the colony high school wrestling room i mean we could be at and the survivor that, series that could happen too yeah or the survivor series or you know uh coach rosen swag and uh me? Well, I, I think the Colony High School varsity football team could use your abilities right about now. Yeah, I don't. Um, I've not followed, but I I know based on your conversation, they've uh, they've they've uh, hit rough, the rough stretch, stretch, rough stretch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a rough go. I mean, they got they do have one win over Schenectady this year, but uh, they lost to Shen forty nine to thirteen. Oh. That's not a close one. No, it was forty-two-seven in the ha- at the half. So, <laughs> at the, if I remember correctly, the way the game works, <laughs> that's not a close game. No, no, I don't think so. It was bad. Yes. So, how was the training for the boxing match going? Ah, uh, awesome. Yeah, going uh, really well. Uh, I got a little bit sick. Oh, whoa, news breaking news. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, a little bit sick uh, over the weekend, but I around in the corner on that and um, trained not right through it, uh, but I was COVID negative. Uh, I was uh, so um, yeah, and then back to training fully now. Um, I think it may have taken a little toll on me, but. Um, 
I, you know, I, it'll be an afterthought a few days from now. And uh, training's been going really well. Um, got some sparring in. Uh, yeah, just feeling way more comfortable as a boxer and not as a kickboxer. Um, which, you know, I, I think a lot of people would think are, are same or very similar, but it's, it's not. It's uh, it's quite a bit different. You really? Know? Yeah, quite a bit different. It's not you don't just so you add the feet, and and I train Muay Thai, so you you add knees and and elbows, and you know those are that changes your defense for sure. Um, you can tie up, but you can't necessarily clinch, which is a huge. Uh, aspect of of Muay Thai, which is where you basically get like a, a collar tie on on a person and steer them around with um, control of their neck, and you can you know drive knees into their body, into their face, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And when you have a good clinch, like it's a game changer. So these are things that, um, yeah, they're not at my disposal for this and and then obviously the kicks changes things um so yeah it's just uh but just getting used to it and then relying on just the uh you know bing and bang <laughs> is that what you're naming your fists by the way is that bing and bang i think i just did i don't okay. I, I wasn't planning on it, but that's newsworthy something else I don't, well, I think Rocky calls his Cuff and Link, wasn't it? Or that the Turtles? Uh, Rocky Balboa? Yes, Rocky? Balboa. A good friend of the show. Oh, okay. I thought he named, maybe it was his Turtles he named. Um, Cuff and Link. Cuff yeah. and Link. No? I don't know I don't what's know. going on. Did you watch the UFC over the weekend? I did. Did you, gentlemen? What are your thoughts on Sean O'Malley being a possible face of the UFC? What are your thoughts, Frank? Let me throw that right back at you. I'm not a giant okay. fan of Mr. O'Malley. I think he's too much of a cartoon character. Really? Yes. That but it goes to the point that you guys made last week that guys that um, Dana White – Wants to be a promoter, but he wants to be a pro wrestling promoter. He wants storylines and characters to draw in people. Uh huh. And that's why I think he's going. Sean O'Malley is going to be the next, the big guy, the face, similar to where um, Conor McGregor is. Well, do you think it's because Sean O'Malley is very much of the? I, and I don't know. I know the generation has a name, but it that Twitch generation and. You know the weed smoking and the like. It, do you think that it's because the, he spearheads that sort of um, following? Correct. Okay. Take that. Take that away from him. He just got. It's basically like one of us fighting. There really isn't any panage to anything he does. So you don't think, from a, a fighter skill set, he's anything special? I'm pretty sure he was the underdog going into that fight. He was the underdog going into I that. I think it was considered, considered an upset. Then you know, well, but he was also fighting Peter Yan, who literally, and this is how fast the game changes. Two fights ago, like Peter Yan was considered like a world beater, mm -hmm. um, and even in that fight, like I'll be honest, I didn't give it to O'Malley. I thought Peter Yam won that fight. Hmm. Interesting. I, I definitely thought Peter Yan was more well-rounded in the fight. Um, and I felt like he controlled a bit more of the fight. Like I wasn't mad at the decision. Like I'm not, I'm not upset by it. Like, Oh my God, he got robbed. But I just, I, you know, I, I think after I watch a fight, I usually have a, uh, an immediate feeling of like, okay, yeah, he won. And uh, I felt like Jan had won that fight. You know, I don't think it's a, um, a travesty 
But I also think that it was important for the UFC or Sean O'Malley to win that fight. And if it's not definitive, you know, where it's a submission or a knockout, I don't know. You, it's hard not to be suspicious. And this is, I don't want to harken back to the conversation with uh, Mr. Filthy Tom Lawler, but I, I mean, it's that's the, kind of like what that, that's what I was putting down, and you're picking it up. So, yeah, pro wrestler in me, I mean, I'm skeptical of everything, I guess. I, I mean, I'll call it the pro wrestler in me, but it, it just, it just is what it is, you know. Um, it does. It makes you raise your eyebrows a little bit, and not just one of them. Both of them. See that? Did you catch that, Batman? I did. Yeah, I'm doing it. You can't see it though because I have my mask on that I can't take off. Well, because we can't. Yeah, if you take it off, then we'll know who you are. Right. Well, that's true. true that enough. is that is true. My name is on the video screen, but that's okay. Right. Well. I what are you drinking it. there? What are you drinking? Um, tea, vodka. Okay. No, uh, actually, because I was sick, it was uh, Theraflu. Nice. I've been drinking Theraflu lately. <laughs> Yummy. Yummy. Yeah, so um, I thought the fights were really good. Uh, Dan, uh, Batman, did yeah. you? I did not, actually. I, I, I tried to catch up. This this weekend was kind of blurry. Um, well, you're fighting uh, crime. You're fighting crime. I, yeah, I was out you know, protecting the greater capital region from beer. I was, like, I was, wait, I was protecting them from beer. I tried to drink all the, all the beer in the capital region. Right. Well, like, yeah. I don't know. I wasn't there. So failed, failed miserably. Uh, I was watching the fights. <laughs> I consumed one, I think okay. or two. Then again, the fights were on Saturday morning. So I don't that like is, that. No, well, they were in a different time zone. That's going to happen. Yeah, they were in Abu Dhabi. Bless you. Abu no, that's Dhabi. what I was thinking. Abu Dhabi. Yeah, we have it. Abu like that's uh, Abu Dhabi. Abu, <laughs> Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. <laughs> this weekend we got an NFL game on Sunday morning at nine thirty because they're playing hate, in London. Hate that too. Hate that too. Well, I am a traditionalist. Um, re- real quick. Uh, before we move on from the, what else piqued your interest uh, in that fight card there, uh, Rudolph? That for me was the uh, headline because you, you can see where it's going to go from here. They're going to put the rocket ship on him and he will be the face of the face of the team, so to speak, face of the UFC. See, I don't know if we're there quite yet. Okay. What do you think? If we're there quite yet. I think he might be on the cusp of it, but I don't know if we're there quite yet. Um, he is very long and very tall for the division, um, which I think you could see, obviously, in the uh, matchup with Peter Yan, uh, which I think that's the UFC. Mm, I, it's hard to say. Like, did they – not do him a, a favor by giving him Peter Yan. I mean, Peter Yan is a tough out for anybody. But as far as fighting styles go, um, you know that was a guy that was going to probably stand and and uh, stand with O'Malley because that's kind of the way he goes. Although. Jan is a, a really good grappler as well. He just he doesn't rely on it quite as much. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I think we're real close to the uh, rocket being strapped to O'Malley, but I, I don't know if we're there quite yet. What are your thoughts on the Paul brothers, Jake and Logan? I know one does pro wrestling. The other one, I think, is boxing Anderson Silva soon. Yeah. One is big, and then the other one I don't think is. So I've seen the bigger guy. I saw some of his stuff with Floyd Mayweather, and I think he was also the one that knocked out um, 
Um, uh, I want to say Tyrone Wheatley, but he's a football player. <laughs> Ty Wheatley is a running back. Right. Running back. Wheatley um, uh, from the UFC. Oh, man. All right. I have no memory. Um, anyway, I... I think that they're – I haven't seen the younger brother fight, I don't believe, or the smaller one. I saw Tyrone him. Woodley. Tyrone Woodley. Tyrone Woodley. There you go. Um, I did see some footage of him kicking a Muay Thai pad, um, and his leg kicks could use some work. Um, I'm not going to lie. So if his – plan is to get into kickboxing or MMA. Um, you know, I, it, he needs a little bit more work. They're not bad they're but they're not there yet. Um, and that's just my opinion. Um, uh, but then the other Logan, the one that's wrestling, did he wrestle Roman Reigns already? Or I is think he, he does it next week, next okay. weekend. Yeah. Okay. Over in Saudi Arabia is just boxing. Um, and he's a big dude. I believe, I believe he's, you know, like 225, um, maybe six foot, um, and seems to be a, a good athlete. Um, I, apparently he's like a pro wrestling, like, uh, like picked it up really well. And hence he's wrestling Roman Reigns. And, and I, I don't, you know, I, I mean, go make that money. And if people are willing to pay and, and want to see it, like, I don't know, there's lots of things that go into making up um, what what would encourage people to spend their money to watch you do A, B, or C, you know? And if it's not, you know, doing a, a goddamn uh, chemistry experiment, then why not boxing or why not pro wrestling? Like, well, well, I think the Roman Reigns match for Logan is like his second or third pro wrestling match. Yeah, wasn't he at WrestleMania? Again, I, I yes, think so. he's with the Miz. The Miz, I think he was the Miz with the tag team. Yeah. yeah, he did some Shane McMahon stuff too, off the top rope, through the announce table, all that fun yeah. stuff. Yeah, those guys tend to do. You know, people come in from the outside, and they they tend to want to do some. High risk stuff. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. I don't have a problem with it. Well, that's my next question. Does it bother you when guys from the outside come into your world? No, no. I mean, it it, it, it is what it is. I I think back in the day, it used to for sure. I mean, it's somewhat legendary at this point that um, Piper did not take kindly to mr t that pay the fool. yeah <laughs> um how much of that is real how much of it's gimmick i don't know um i could see both sides of it um but at the same time at this point like anything crossover like that you why fight it why swim like vince is all about it and you know, mainstream media coverage and stuff like that is only good for the brand. And the at the end of the day, that's good for the boys. So how can you, you know, you're, you're kind of cutting your nose to spite your face if you are um, resistant to that. So I, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, one, one of the things that they're doing it's just basically to be, uh, repeat what you said. They're putting more eyes on your brand. They're bringing, yeah. and they're they're also bringing in people that may or may not actually be a you know consistent wrestling fan and or observer. Right. Well, I think back in the day when pro wrestling was treated differently and was a bit more protected, um, you know, that's a bit more of a slippery slope. Where nowadays. You know, I mean, let's let's face it. Like the the cat is out of the bag, and and to treat it as anything other than that right now is an antiquated um, take on 
what it is that we do. Everything has to progress and everything has to evolve. And pro wrestling is evolving for better or for worse, but it's changing. <clears throat> and, um, you know, trying to hold on to stuff that was, it doesn't work for anything. All right. Yeah. Finally, there was some tragic news last week with Kevin Nash's son, uh, Tristan, passing away unexpectedly. Um, Kevin did do his podcast that dropped yesterday. I'm not sure when he – I think he recorded it Saturday. But one of the things that struck me were the the amount of people that gave him grief and not in a good way. And Bobby and I kind of touched on this before about the Twitter tough guys and – at some point, there's got to be some accountability. I know it's social media, but geez, give the guy a break. I, I know all, th- all three of us heard of that podcast in one form or another. It's ridiculous. Thoughts? Um, Dennis? I mean, Batman? Oh, no. It's blown. <laughs> it's Bruce, by the way. Bruce. Uh, not, I mean, no, it's not Bruce. It's Batman. Um. The, the, the podcast that I mean, I, I give him all the credit in the world for being able to go in and and do that after losing his son. Uh, just listening to it, it was tough to listen to, not because of the sadness that was behind it or, or you know, why they were doing that episode of the podcast. But just to hear what people he didn't really go into detail of what people were saying. But the fact that people were saying anything rather other than I'm sorry for your loss, you know thoughts and prayers, whatever it was, anything else is horseshit. Like I, I was just like, how can you, how much do you hate yourself? Yeah. To say shit like that after someone watched their son die. Yeah. And your thought was screw this guy. Cause I disagree with one of a, a belief of his, or I didn't like him as a wrestler. So you decide that now is the good time to talk your shit and, you know, go off on him now. So well, Bobby, Bobby has the same. He's kind of the same person that Kevin is, as far as they speak their mind, mm-hmm. and people don't like that. They look at it as being controversial or whatever. It's his opinion. And for me, regardless of his, he has a difference of opinion or a different right. view on the world of view. Why does that? That should not matter. He's a human exactly. being, and he lost, and he buried his son, which. We're not supposed to do. We're not. You, no. It's not natural to bury your child. So no. you can have a difference of opinion of, with the guy, right. but still treat him as a human and and you know, just offer condolences. Otherwise, just shut up. Leave him alone. Right. Well, listening to it myself, uh, I don't know how anybody could have not um, been aware of the fact that this is a man. Um, in that moment, in that present moment, doing the podcast, who was on, you know, I, whatever you want to call it, autopilot or default or, you know, um, was just kind of um, I, not going through the motions, but just like it has to be surreal. It has to be a moment that like you have a a different your emotions are so all over the place that i just don't know how you can have clear thought and the fact that he was had you know courage enough to to go on there and speak about it um and i thought he did really well with it um despite the fact that you know you you could just sense at least i did like wow He's in, um, you know, this just seems like autopilot. Like, how can he really, you know, and how can he be anything else? So when it did go the direction, and Frank, you had warned me that that was some of, you know, the, towards the tail end of it. So I kind of was expecting, like, waiting for that other shoe to drop. And it didn't for, for a good portion of it. Um, so actually... <sighs> I don't even want to use the word enjoyed, but like it was nice in a tribute sort of way to his son, you know, who, who I didn't know, but they spoke, um, 
obviously uh, glowing about about their son as the, as they should, and and it felt candid and and honest, and <clears throat> you know, and then when Kevin did get into the 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 Twitter stuff, and uh, you know, like you had said, Frank, I, and the fact is, it's not gonna stop. Mm -hmm. It's only going to get worse. Like this is kind of the beginning or the it's only going to get worse because there are, there's no checks and balances. It's the same way we talked uh, way back on one of the other episodes about the guy that wrote about trying to get Adam and Kyle to get out of their contracts or whatever. Like there is no checks and balances. And there's even less checks and balances when it comes to people online saying whatever they want. Like Twitter is just toxic, toxic, just, and who are the people that are, you know, spewing their hate, like in their, in their opinions. Meanwhile, you know, you're, they, they form an opinion about somebody based on one thing. And like, you can't be, if, if you are this one attribute that aligns with this group, you can't not be that. And it's like, okay, that's not real. Mm -hmm. Like, what kind, That's not life. What are we talking about? Um, and people are just looking to be angry. And I really think, you know, people hate themselves. And so they're, uh, they're shitty. Yeah, I, I can't argue with that. It's, it's, no. Yeah. Spot on. I mean, it, it, it really sucks. And, and my, my heart goes out to Kevin, um, you know, and he, he brought up it, he and his wife and being at the hospital and different things. And, that, you know, it just it's hard not to put yourself in those shoes. And then, you know, you think about, well, man, I mean, if that was me and my wife and we were like, so how do you not have compassion for that person? It's not human to be void of compassion like that. Like that, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, it's above my pay grade, but the clinical definition of that is like, okay, well, you're a psychopath. <clears throat> you know, you lack empathy or, you know, there's different ones, but it's just, I don't know, man. It's, I find it, it's easier to not be a scumbag, right? I would think. Well, I think for us, because we're not really scumbags, I think with that, I think what ends up happening a lot of times on social media is they're they're doing the exact opposite of what you just said and put it. They're not putting themselves in someone else's shoes because they don't think about how it affects someone else. They only think about their opinion and what they have to say. Right. And they say it and they don't. And, and there is no consideration for someone else's feelings, for the lack of a better term. And meanwhile, if seven foot Kevin Nash was walking down the street, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't say anything to right. him other than, excuse me, Mr. Nash, can I have your autograph? Yeah. Like, it's just, it's such a, that keyboard warrior thing. I hate even using the terminology, but it's like, it's just gross. It really is. And like, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not about being able to beat people up or not beat people up, but it's like, you know, the things that people will say online or like say in their car or, you know, there's like this bubble of protection. Um, yeah. It's just gross. Did somebody walk in the studio, Batman? No, I was just checking to see if there was anybody out in the, out in the offices part. Cause Check. Just curious how, what they would be thinking if they looked in the window and uh -oh. saw me saw me sitting here like this. <laughs> we at, we're at heightened alert. Heightened alert. Yeah. It is. Listen, it's Halloween. It is true. Very, very, very true. It's season. I <coughs> bless you. What kind of candy, if candy, are you giving out at the fish castle? Um, uh, come on, Frank. Carrots. Swedish fish. Oh, I, know, I like it. I like it. Hey, oh. that's good. That's good. That's good. Nice. Dennis. Yeah. I have no idea. I probably won't okay. be home. To, I probably won't be home to hand out candy because I go walk around with my youngest daughter's little sister uh, and her family. So. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. 
What about you, Frank? So, are you are you handing out reindeer treats? Yes. Candy yes. corn. Ew. Yes. Wait, I, I can't. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Right. I'll be uh, frank with you. I don't know. We won't be here. Yeah. Where are you we're, be? we're taking over the neighborhood. I want candy in every house. Where are you gonna be? What do you mean? We're, gonna, we're working the we're working the neighborhood. We are working the neighborhood. I That's put a these really kids weird thing through. To say about your kids. We're gonna. I put them through a regiment. We walk every crevice of this neighborhood, getting candy, free candy. Really? Yes. <laughs> I like how they're you're actually, doing free candy. As they're actually they're, they're training right now. They're training right now. <laughs> he said to get candy, free candy. That's important. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be free. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Can I just throw in that while sure. we were talking about all kinds of combat sports and getting kind of deep here, and I was looking at our video stream, and I'm looking at Bobby talking about the UFC 280. Yeah. And he's got on a fucking horse head. <laughs> and he does. And he does. Yeah. I would take us seriously on this episode for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, and he's got apples. Horses like apple. They do. Mm -hmm. I know this wasn't the... part of our talking topics, but I don't know if you saw this. There is a company, a shoe company down in Kentucky coming out with sneakers for horses, including Air Jordans. For horses. $1,200 a shoe. Ooh. Yeah. There well, it. a shoe? Yeah. Now you got to buy four of them. Do the math. Right. Yeah. So that'd be $4,800 to shoe a horse? Yeah. I'm thinking, though, depending on the horse you own, if you could afford to have bought that horse, you can probably afford to put $1,200 sneakers on its feet. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Anyway, there's my contribution to the podcast. I'll just sit here now. That's right. Uh, well, so that you, you brought up. The UFC talk, and, and I hate to go back to it, but I do have to mention <clears throat> there there are tough people in in MMA in combat sports and everything, obviously. And then there's TJ Dillashaw. Like, come on, did like Batman? You didn't see it, but. So TJ Dillashaw fought um, uh, Sterling and um, highly anticipated fight, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it turns out that TJ dislocated his shoulder maybe two weeks into the fight camp or whatever. And uh, it had then popped out some like, 18 times during camp or whatever. And you, you hear excuses all the time. What and But, I mean, he, there was no excuse made by him. He could have pulled out of the fight. He could have, but he went ahead and he fought anyway. Um, he gets a bum rap for some of the stuff that has come along with the PEDs, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the fact the guy served his time he had a suspension he was out for two years like it's either forgive him or he can never be forgiven you know um but whatever it is and 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 not to go back to the conversation that i had with you know that we had on here with tom but like not everything is what it seems mm -hmm. and people <laughs> they need to to keep that in mind that there is a lot of what you take as fact that is far from it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there is no doubting the human element that came along with him staying in that fight. Um, it was maybe a minute in, his shoulder popped out. You could see um, on the ground the way that he could not support himself it you know and there was like a decision it seemed like and he just decided like i'm not like making an excuse i'm just gonna fight and it's not ideal 
but you hear about that all the time too is is how many times do you get through a fight camp whether it's mma or boxing or whatever that's ideal i mean ideal would be what you know no injuries no this no that like i i know myself preparing for this boxing um fight that i'm doing um yeah there, there's been a, a few uh things here and there and it was the same conclusion i came to like okay well i can do this fight or i can say no and this is my reason for not doing it um or do you just be a man and you get on with it like i don't know i don't know how you could watch the performance by dillashaw and not at least be inspired by just the human element of that motherfucker is tough he's tougher than a cheap steak on a saturday night <laughs> I mean, I've heard the cheap steak thing, but I, you added the Saturday. I did. I did. I did. I did. <laughs> hey, coming to you. Next one? Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm a vegan. <laughs> I'm a vegan. <laughs> With <a> horse head. <laughs> you know, I ate horse. Hmm. In Saratoga? No. No. I didn't eat horse in Saratoga. I ate it in Japan. <laughs> While I lived in Saratoga, but I was in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those of you watching on video, that was Bobby playing peekaboo with us. Uh <laughs> yeah, that's my horsey. Uh, uh. So I think you should right. call out uh, Machine Gun. You well, got you should be the No Way Champion. That's Carl Anderson. He's got a new place of employment. He's got to drop the belt to you. I think that's your belt. They don't maybe, know it yet. Man, maybe you know. Listen, who knows? Who knows? I could end up anywhere. That's the beauty of this. I'm going to Dubai in two weeks. I'm gonna You're going to California in, in December. Yeah. And I thought I was going next weekend, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is a, that's a true statement. All right. So, gentlemen, there was a little bit of Twitter activity this week. And he's talking about the poll, Frank. The poll that you put where we put up or that he put up on Twitter. Not, not the poll. Yes. 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 Or you are correct. The first poll, Rudolph. You are not correct, the, the wise one. Not, <laughs> not, not, not the flag poll. Nope. We threw yeah. a poll up of some of your favorite matches. Yes. And the match that won was you and Uncle Al, AJ Styles. Uh, Uncle what? Al. Set that match up. How did that come to be? Why did it come to be? Was it a one-off? Because, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it was a one-off. Um, I would think that that came at a time when Kyle and I were doing the Red Dragon thing, and it was really kind of taken off, and it was one of the better acts on the show. Um, and AJ, I don't remember exactly what his situation was. I th at that point, he was definitely working for New Japan, um, maybe newly out of TNA and like doing um, independence and stuff again and, and kind of made a little run through Ring of Honor. I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was for sure um, checking a box for me to get a, a singles match with AJ Styles, you know, one of the guys that um, I saw in Ring of Honor when, you know, that was a time on the come up for me that I didn't know if pro wrestling was for me because I was, you know, doing some of these independents and stuff and just feeling like, okay, I don't, these guys are like weekend warriors. Like they're not this, these are not my people. I don't feel like I'm in a room of my peers. I feel like I'm in a room of assholes, you know, like I, I don't want to do this. And, but then I would see, I would go to ring of honor shows and I would see guys like Samoa Joe guys like AJ styles. And I was 
you know, and Brian Danielson. And I was taken back by like, wow, you know, here I am thinking that, you know, in these other independent locker rooms, like my shit don't stink. And I'm, 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 you know, better athlete than these people. And then I see these guys and, and I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm a better athlete than AJ Styles, you know? So, to, and then for AJ to be who AJ is, and let's face it, like AJ is basically our generation's showstopper, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and he's been everywhere there is that you could be. And he's worked, you know, by the time he's left any company he's been in, he's been the top performer. So, um, yeah, that was a huge uh, box to be checked for me. All right, so without any further ado, I think we're going to wind it up at 421-ish. Does that seem uh, fair and operable? That's what I am. I mean, right now. Uh, okay, okay, let's. Well, before we before we hit the play, um, just for those of you playing along at home, we're actually going to watch. We're going to watch the match and kind of Bobby's going to go through. Yeah. Give his thoughts on it. And so, we want to people. Do we want to give the people give the people what they want? Well, or... <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I know where we're going with that. I'm glad you're wearing clothes on your costume. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A reindeer nipple, <laughs> so like an otter. It's AJ Styles, Bobby Fish, full match. Right, you so maybe it your, you can put it in your YouTube machine. YouTube, yeah, put it in your YouTube machine. It's a uh, Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor Wrestling, uh, hashtag ROH, AJ Styles versus Bobby Fish, full match, as Frank said. And uh, we're, we're picking it up at 421. Is that the idea here? I think so. Ready? Uh, ready? Here we go. I'm ready. One. There's lockup. Oh. Nice hair. I like the man bun. Ah. Uh, yeah. That was back in. Man bun. And fish rolls out to the floor. Uh, and four. The priest, you and I were together. The hair just. The rest of Milwaukee when O'Reilly wrestled. There's Kyle cooling you down. Oh, so AJ, what would you consider that? Whose commentary is on? Turn that down. The commentary down. Well, I think what's happening, it's running, I think it's running interference too with you because you're breaking up every time you talk. Oh, uh, okay. I turned mine down. There we go. We, we should have probably figured this stuff out before. Yeah. See the pants. Ah. Yeah, the old headlock takeover. What venue is this? this? Oh, but you can get you can get food and beer right there in Atlanta, I believe. Hotlanta, Hotlanta, Hotlanta. Yeah, Hotlanta. I this was a time, like I said, I, I Kyle and I really getting the. Uh, Red Dragon thing going, and and we were getting it over. Um, and AJ, you know, as good as he is, it's it's hard not to to you know like the guy. So it was uh, it was fun to go out and have such a strong presence and be able to um, you know to to play my role to be to be the role that uh, that I, I think Red Dragon was intended to be. Uh, eventually, you know, evolved into some other stuff, but this was our, our original concept very much. Was AJ Bullet Club at this time? Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Because it would be, um, yes, I think he would have been. I think he would have just turned Bullet Club because um, Fergal had left. Ah, oh, work in the arm. Work in the arm. And then AJ stepped in. 
And if you think about it, that Bullet Club, man, at so many iterations. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, Gato, just a brilliant mind for wrestling. To be able to lose such a presence like Fergal and um, fill the gap. And then to lose that gap filler who was AJ and be able to fill it again with Kenny Omega. Um, and I don't know. I, I'm not as familiar with stuff at this point because I don't work there. But, um, you know, dare you say Jay White at this point? I, I don't know. AJ's really uh, working over that 24-inch um, python of mine. It's like watching Ole Anderson and Ricky Morton circa 1985. Yeah, minus the man bun. Hey, can we get the man bun back? I don't think I can pull it off anymore. I would like to do it. I just don't think my hair will It just won't cooperate. <laughs> You know, my wife's a barber, too. I mean, if there was anybody that could make it happen. Oh, I just got a an ad. Uh-oh. Oh, now We're I'm back. You. Okay. Oh, look at that spinning kick. Yeah, that's a wheel kick. That's a wheel kick. Thrown properly. Now, granted, I missed. However, thrown properly. Who's a better barber, your wife or Brutus? Um, my wife, for oh, sure. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah, she doesn't use the big um, hedge trimmers. Yeah, she doesn't. I've never seen her break them out. <laughs> yeah. See, so like here. <coughs> This is where you can be yourself. You can be uh, something other than the the norm, you know? Like, this is where I add martial arts to my offense and the things that I do um, because that's, like, kind of just the flavor I put on it. And... Why do I put that flavor on it? Because that's what I train. So it's what I do well. If you don't train it, oh, there's Kyle getting the distraction. Oh, yeah. Textbook. Yeah. You know, and then that's like taking the martial arts that I, I love and have grown up tr trying to be good at and adding some, some pro wrestling to it. You know, that uh, huge influence for Kyle and I when we were uh, starting Red Dragon was, and there's a Muay Thai clinch. This is all, this is, that's martial arts. And like, it, you know, it looks the proper because I train it. Um, but anyway, like I was saying, like uh, Arn and Tully were huge influences over Kyle and I at this time, you know, huge, just because that's who we were supposed to be. And that, dare I say, like, that was the role we kind of played years later in NXT. Um, one of my favorite matches there was uh, from Philadelphia TakeOver, and it was us against AOP. And uh, Paul Ellering was their manager. And it was like, it, it truly felt like we were Arn and Tully and we were working with the Road Warriors. You know, which, ooh, that probably hurt. Looked a little tight, a little stiff. Yeah. Tough landing. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> Alan... Alan might want to think twice about doing that. Getting a little refreshment from Kyle. <laughs> and then out to the floor because that's what we do. Break the count, right? Break the count. 
wait for the referee, and then roll out the other side because referees are dumb. <laughs> As I sit here in my horse head. <laughs> oh, oh, get yourself some, AJ. Get yourself some of that. And that's all I'm asking is if you're going to throw the, if you're going to like know how to throw them or don't throw them. It's a simple request. Why is it so difficult for people? When you're doing seminars and stuff like that, what are you, what are you throwing down? Uh, uh, as far as what? Like, what are you teaching a class basically? Um, I mean, it really depends. If it's a seminar, it really depends on what level you have in the room. And sometimes that that's what can make seminars difficult is you don't, you know, you have various levels of, you know, some people that are working and, and some are people that are, oh, you see that? You see that? What's that, Frank? A beautiful move. That's a fish. That's, that's the old fish hook. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, so that kind of dictates what you can and can't do at the, at the seminars. Um, but. Oh, um, look at that. Really, you know, for me, at, at, when I'm doing a, a seminar, um, I, I try to focus a, a bit on people, you know, learning how to work. Um, without so much cooperation, because I think, you know, having done this as long as I have and coming up in a generation where like, there weren't a lot of people to teach. So we've got this bastardized version of pro wrestling, um, where a lot of stuff is, is, uh, <laughs> I don't know, for lack of a better term, we'll call it overproduced. And uh, I think there's a spontaneity that's missing. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to save wrestling by any means, but. Don't lie, don't lie. We're trying to do that. <laughs> if uh, if there's something that, that could be brought back to it, I, I think it's just a, a, an ability and a comfort in being spontaneous uh, as opposed to paint by numbers. I mean, you guys are telling a story at this match. Yeah. And that's Pro Wrestling 101, if I'm not mistaken. And it's fun. You know, like that part of it is fun. That's the creative concept for me is 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 that. That's what I think I enjoy, uh, you know, about it is figuring out how to tell that story. And, you know, like even here we're – AJ's fighting to get, um, you know, back up and and to get to a, a like, it, it, you don't just go zero to hero, you know. Um, I don't know. I, I, it's this is the first time I've watched this in years, uh, but watching it at, at the moment, like I really AJ's just such a pro. Such a pro, and and that goes without saying. My God, all I had to do was be there. <coughs> yeah, but the stuff you're doing, it makes sense in the match. It's just not a bunch of high spots, right? Yeah, and I think that that was a lot of you know what Ooh. what Kyle and I at that time were really trying to focus on. Uh, we're being you know who we were supposed to be, and this is who we were supposed to be. Um, it was fun. It was fun. Styles Clash. Not today. Uh, no, textbook tackle this turnbuckle. That's Colony Apple right there. <laughs> oh. And we're back to commercial. Yeah. 
So, uh, and we're back. I don't know what you guys are doing. I haven't had a single ad pop up in mine yet. Oh, look at that souffle. I'm not back yet. I am blind and living color. Oh, I'm not back yet. Here we go. All right. All right. Exploder into the buckle. The exploder. Oh, he landed a little short. A little short. Normally, I get him up right, right in that buckle. Yeah. Yeah. There's a young, a young Kyle O'Reilly. That's pre-dad Kyle O'Reilly. Pre-dad. Pre-dad. Pre-dad? Pre-dad. Pre-dad. Pre little over-rotation on that spinning back kick. Little over-rotation. Take a look at those gloves that uh, AJ's got on. Do you recognize those, uh, Rudolph? I do. Yeah, those are the old Newmans. Hello, Newmans. Hello. Newmans. <laughs> oh, we turned the favor on you there. Oh, he did. He did. He did. Yeah, that was the souffle into the buckle. Into the bottle. Huh. I'm like a hairless cat in this. Oh. Oh, getting a little breather. Yeah. Can't Better get, move. I don't, I don't know if Kyle can grow a beard here. <laughs> <laughs> I think Kyle was going. I think he had to leave early that night to go to the prom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, oh, look at that. Ooh. Oh. That's not what I wanted to have. Was that a moonsault? It was. You didn't know I had that in the You back. dirty dog. Yeah. That's been a staple. I don't do it as much now, but that's because I'm a heel. Yeah, I've, I've always fancied myself a, a pretty good moonsault. That was pretty good. Yeah. Better than mine. Better than mine. Yeah. Well, Rudolph is known to... How's Batman's moon soul? I don't usually have to use it. I just use my gadgets. Oh. I got my utility belt, my fanny pack, my bat pack, <laughs> my bat fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are trading punches, trading blows. Look at this. Oh, don't make it X rated, Frank. Two grown men just bashing each other. <laughs> Stiff. All right, this sounds wow. It just got weird. <laughs> now it sounds inappropriate. <laughs> Too dead. Frank's Too actually dead. not watching the match anymore. <laughs> uh, One of his other windows opened on his phone. <laughs> food and beer there still, guys. There's still food and beer. I think he's trying to knock off my man bun. It looked like it. Yeah. I think I knocked his retainer out. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, look at that. Look at this. Boost. Man. Uh, boost combination. Right hand, liver shot, leg kick. Ernesto Hoost. Oh, that hurt. A little, yeah. little Pele to the brain usually doesn't feel so good. Yeah. It's been a while since I've had one of those. 
Pele's or brains? Um, both. Fair enough. Yeah, we got some time on this one, huh? We they gave us some time. Would this have been the main event? Yeah, of that I believe so. Um, and I think we were. I think AJ lived nearby. Um, I I don't know. I don't, yeah, I think it would have been the main. Yeah. I'm going to at least say it was. If it wasn't, it's the main event in any city. Yeah. It should have been. Yeah, I'm going to say it was. Hey, did you see uh, Colby Carino in the background there? The son of Steve. The hardcore legend, Steve. Yeah. Oh, cameo from Frank's daughter in the video. Got to love that. Really? Yeah, she just she danced is. behind him. There she is. There she is looking on. Oh. No costume now. Bring why, why there's a horse in her dad's. <laughs> and a Batman. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. She oh. looked over and went, for some reason, my dad's talking to a horse and Batman. <laughs> AJ's gonna shoot me. Oh, I think this is it, boys. No, take us home. I don't know. I still. It looks like I still got some fight left in me. Oh, there it is. Uh, there it is. Oh boy. Uh, this is gonna do leave it again. Him. Do it again. That's uh, gonna leave him. There boy. we go. Yeah. Take us home. There. Yep. There we have it. There it is. I think that's <laughs> the position that he pinned me with. Wait, what? Uh, I think that's the position in yoga when you put your pecker in your face. <laughs> Maybe. I don't. I don't do yoga, but I've never heard of it. I've heard of yoga. Nah, forget it. Yogi. Bear. Hey, boo -boo. Hey, boo -boo. <coughs> okay. Well. Well, that was. Uh, that's, yeah, that's the end of it. There we go. Kyle yep. checking you out, making sure you're okay. Yeah, he's checking my pulse, I think. Kyle used to, used to make sure I wasn't dead. So that's, good for you. It's a good partner. Good partner. Yeah, just make sure he's not dead. Well, and AJ was, you know, he pointed a gun at me more than once. I could have been dead. Look at that baby face on Kyle. Cauliflower ear, but he can't grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. There we have it, boys and girls. There's we have it. The first installment of the watch along. Yourself yeah. and AJ style. We'll, we'll try to do this once a month. Yeah. Uh, next month we'll have Dennis's top four matches. Okay. We'll put the poll up and. Oh, but wait, my top four matches that Bobby was in. Any or... match you can, any match you want to put, we can find. Oh, okay. And as long as they're not my matches, because we're not going to find any of those. You never know. You never know. Fair enough. And it's Batman, damn it. Don't stop calling me Dennis. Yes. And my face is so sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a little moist. I think on that note, we can uh, take us home. But yep. next week, next week, <sighs> is a very, a spe very special episode. Um, birthday edition. It's the belated birthday edition. Yes, yes. Sir. We're, we're going to sing happy birthday to each other. Oh, boy. For an oh, hour. Boy. For an in hour. Different, in different languages. Yeah, it's not a solo birthday. Oh, no. Are we all Scorpios? Yeah. We are. Yep. We are. The Scorpion King belated birthday bonanza. It's going to be crazy. The Scorpio King belated birthday bonanza. 
That's that right. Works. Bombshell. The Rock is going to be on next week. Holy shit. Oh, well, that's that, that happened. All right. Yeah. All right. Dwayne uh, Johnson will be on the show next week promoting right. his new show, Giant Ant or Ant Man or whatever it's called. Uh, Black Adam. Giant Man. <laughs> <laughs> Just a giant. Big man. Dwayne Johnson starring in Giant Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the DC Universe's version of Marvel's Ant Man. I love it. Nice. Gentlemen, <sighs> it's been real. Yeah. Buy a, buy a podcast shirt. Would you pe- put your hat back on? Damn it. It's not over with yet. Yeah. The podcast shirts that are out there. Yeah, there's one by me. I'll tell you, they're going. Uh, one of them's going to Dubai with us. Nice. Maybe a couple. There it is. Look at that. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> yep. All right, <laughs> take us home, Frank. Is happy Good to night. be. Happy to be here. Yada, yada, yada. Meow, meow, meow. Uh, Batman. My face is sweaty. I'm glad it's over. It was fun, but I'm glad it's over. Okay. Bobby? Got anything? Uh, I'm waiting on you. All right. Say goodnight, Bobby. Goodnight, Bobby. <laughs>